This is Darren from PostgresCourse.com. And what I wanted to discuss today was a pretty common problem that you'll see when using CentOS or another uh, Red Hat based operating system. So to just demonstrate the problem, I'll just say yum search PostgreSQL. So this is the typical way we're going to search for and then later install packages for Postgres on a Red Hat based system like CentOS. And you can see here, there's a number of packages available for Postgres. That looks fine, but there's actually a problem. If we type yum install and just select the Postgres package, then here's the issue. Notice version 9.2 is the version of Postgres that it offers us for installation. And that is definitely a problem. Just to demonstrate what that problem is, uh, take a look here at the CentOS wiki, and we can see the support statement for CentOS 7, which is the version I'm using for this demo. This version of CentOS will have full updates for over a year from now, and maintenance updates for another four years. So in my organization, I could choose to use this particular version of CentOS, but by default, this version of CentOS is freezing me at version 9.2 of Postgres, which if we just look at the documentation for Postgres, that is an extremely old, almost ancient version of Postgres. So how do I resolve this? It's actually pretty simple. So I'll abandon the installation and it comes down to me essentially updating the repositories that my Red Hat or CentOS server is retrieving software from. Uh, one easy way to do that is to come here to the download section of Postgres, of the Postgres website, click on the Red Hat Family Linux, select Postgres YUM repository. And what's nice is that after I choose which versions of Postgres I want, you'll see here this alert that says, essentially all you have to do is find one RPM per distribution, and that'll automatically give me information for any available Postgres release. So any available Postgres release that is currently supported I can update the repos on my server by simply downloading this file and installing it on my server. So I'm going to right click, copy that link address, go back to my server. And I like to use a utility called wget. Um, you could use curl, but essentially what I want to do is download this file directly to my server. And I'll install this package. All right, that's it. So now it's installed and it should have updated my repo. So let's go back to that search command. So I'll search my repos for Postgres. Notice here all these additional repos at the top that it fetched. And now I have a lot more packages, right? So it hit these additional repos, which are all supported Postgres repos for Red Hat. And now I have additional versions of Postgres, again, all supported versions. And it's nice, we can see here from 9.4 to Postgres 11. So now when I wanna install Postgres, I can actually get an updated new version of Postgres, which I'll just do really quickly. You see it hits the repos. Is this what you want to install? Yes, it is. And of course, I would also install the server package and development packages and libraries and so on. But the point is, is that just with simply installing that one RPM file from the Postgres website, I can get an updated fresh version of Linux. There's other, or not of Linux, but of Postgres. There are other scenarios that we discuss in class regarding installation, different installation methods, what might be the right for your environment. So feel free to check out our other videos and even register for a course at postgrescourse.com. Thanks for watching.